Hey there guys, so we got the patch 11.3 patch preview from Mark Uter right here, he just tweeted it out a couple hours ago, and this is a really meaty patch, so it's going to be a little bit of a longer video, I'll break it up into chapters so you can go to each specific part, what you want to see. But let's just jump straight into it, and let's go with the item and ruin nerfs first. So the first nerf that are going to happen is Dead Man's Plays going from 475 health to 400. Uh, probably just a strong arm item that they want other armor items to take the slot over. A lot of these nerfs are kind of small, so I'm not sure what the scope of these are. A uh, staff of flowing water only going down 10 base AP. Uh, this one's a big one. I honestly thought we'd see a bigger change because of the whole moon staff meta LS and Nemesis have kind of created now. And just taking 10 AP off the base of it, it seems kind of interesting, not touching the effects. So I think that's kind of weird. We might see another staff nerf like in another patch because I'm not seeing anything about moon staff. And if it keeps going and it keeps getting LCS popularity, you could best believe it's probably going to get a nerf. Uh, third one is Zanya's Hourglass. Uh, they kind of mistyped it a little bit here with the eye, but it's okay. Uh, Siki's arm cost is going from 900 to 1,000 gold, and the total cost is 2,500 to 2,600. So, uh, once again, these are just kind of small placebo nerfs that just don't really matter. Like, yes, it is 100 more gold cheaper. Yes, that is going to matter a little bit. But at the end of the day, that's not what's making Zanya's, like, super strong. You got to make it more expensive for how strong of an item Zanya's really is. Uh, Iron Spike Whip, we moved that fact that minions and monsters take double damage from it below 50% health, so now it's just going to do a flat damage no matter what health. Um, I'm sure the Whip junglers out there are going to be upset about that one since uh, some people do like buying the Whip to help their clear for some reason. It's a little interesting that some people decide to do that. Uh, the Gore Drinker Active Heal went from 12, 12 to 8% missing health. Uh, pretty big change there as well, especially now that they're toning down healing across the board for the Gore Drinker users. Such as like Aatrox and his ult not healing as much unless you eat now. The Ravenous Hydra Omni Vamp going from 15% to 10%. That's pretty big too since I know the Ravenous Hydra users love seeing the health bar go from half to full in like one hit. Sterax's base shield is going down uh, 200 to 100 and shield duration is going down 5 to 4 seconds. It's also losing 10 AD as well. That is also a typo that it did not put in here. So... Pretty interesting stuff. I like that Sterax is getting a lot of changes because Sterax is kind of a must build item for bruisers right now, especially since uh, it works with Visage. I honestly don't think Sterax is the problem. I think the problem is that when people buy Sterax, they want the Visage every time since Spirit Visage now gives 20% increased healing and shielding. So it makes these champions look like absolute raid bosses. So now we get to the item buffs. Uh, we have Force of Nature first. So movement speed per stack is now going to 6 to a maximum of 30. And or that's what it was before, and that's going to 8 to a maximum 40. My bad, I forgot to see the buffs. So uh, that's pretty nice. Um, I'm not sure about Force of Nature because some people do buy it, but oftentimes it's only bought on the people who want to run fast, like Ramis, Set, maybe Cho'Goth. But hey, editing the buff the item, that's perfectly fine, right? So it can see more use. But I don't think 10 moves is going to make the difference on making it making me want to build it over Spirit Visage on Bruises and stuff. Uh, Frozen Heart's cost went down by 200, the eight armor went down by 10, possibly a better item since it's cheaper. Uh, I haven't really built much of Frozen Heart, maybe once or twice. Chemtech Putrefy, alright, now this change is something I want to talk about. This one has me really thinking and scratching my head. So the ability he's went up from 15 to 20, pretty nice. And there's a new effect where healing or shielding ally will cause their next damage to inflict a 60% grievous wounds for 3 seconds. There is no cooldown on this, so as long as you heal or shield that ally, he'll be able to apply this. Now, it's a really strong effect, and it's really nice, and I wonder if champions like Sona and Karma will boost their win rate dramatically because of this change. Because someone like Karma and Sona have an easy time uh, mass shielding their team. I mean, Seraphim kind of does too with a W as well. And I was also wondering how this works with champions who have Fawn of Life, the rune, since Fawn of Life technically heals the people you hit does it keep always chaining on the petrify so it's something i want to try out when this change goes through and i wonder how well uh meta is some of these champions and the item becomes itself i think it's a really good change nonetheless though for regular enchanters as well immortal shield bow attack damage went up from 50 to 55 and attacks went up from 15 to 20 percent you want that nice little edge i mean Shield Bow is definitely the least favorite item for ADCs. Honestly, I think she, I've only really seen Shield Bow on like Callista, Yasuo, Yone. Um, not really even seen it much on actual ADCs aside from Callista. So anything to give it a little bit more of an oomph is really nice. 
This Phantom Dancer change is pretty big to it. So Phantom Dancer as it stands doesn't have any attack damage and is now going to have 20 base attack damage. But its attack is going from 45% to 25%. And a long sword is being added instead of the dagger in the build. And a max stacks to get that bonus attack speed ramp is from 5 to 4. Making the bonus attack speed at max stacks from 40 to 30%, so slightly lower. So it is you are losing attack speed at the end of the day, but you're also gaining attack damage on top of the fact of the attack speed and it's easy to get that max attack speed ramp and it's still a crit item you could definitely see uh adc's come back to buying this and maybe some adc's who are going collector right now might even drop collect them by this instead although collect is a very strong item uh phantom dancer is just much much better on some of those traditional adc's like jinx and uh tristana and it sucks that they were forced to build collector because uh, it was a strong item, indeed it is, but it's not, it just doesn't have the attack speed that those ADCs want, and this is giving them a true option for that. So, I believe we're going to see Phantom Dancer see a big resurgence. And then they also changed Lord Dominic's regard from 25% armor pen to 35%. Now, it, might, it may seem small because it's only 10%, but 10% armor pen is very, very big. Very big. And it's even bigger the fact that Lord Dominic's is now going to have 35%, not 30 because as is right now, people are building Shrelda's Grudge over Lord Dominic's regards because Shrelda's has 30% armor pen and Lord Dominic's only has 25. So now Lord Dominic's has the highest armor percentage. So this is going to be a really big change and you can definitely see a lot of people bring Lord Dominic's us outside of the ADC realm as well. You could definitely see Rengar's building this over Shrelda's Grudge now. Uh, the changing Verdant Barrier. I don't, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. I've honestly seen absolutely no one build this. I think I've only built this like two times on Galio, and I don't think I've seen anyone else build this. It's a new component item in the game that goes into Banshee's Veil, and they rework the passive now, so when you kill a unit, you gain 1 MR, maximum 15, and they reduce the cost from 1,200 to 1,000 gold. So it's kind of like a Seeker's Arm Guard, but for MR. And then they, re uh, they also buff Banshee's Veil by get making it go from 65 AP to 80 AP, and increasing the cost to 2,600 gold. So, interesting change there, but... I don't think anyone would buy these items just because they don't treasure the effects as much as other items are right now in the game. They're also buffing uh, Horizon Focus, which was a shock to me because I think Horizon is actually kind of a stronger item in the game and uh, works really well in the champions who can use it, such as like Ari, Nico, and stuff like that. The champions do really well once they get their Horizon, but uh, giving an, an extra oomph for 15 extra AP and making a hyper shot minimum rage at 700 instead of 750. But most people park in Horizon through their CC abilities, unless you're, uh, I guess, Zeraf, but even then he does that too. They are changing Silver Mirror Dawn, which is the Bruiser QSS item, to have 5 more AD and 100 more health. I barely see it ever because most Bruisers just don't care about getting QSS, but uh, nice buffs all around. I just don't know how much some of these are going to really do. Like, Force of Nature, Silver Mirror Dawn, Horizon, it's like... These items are picked for certain champs anyway, so I guess if they want those certain champs to do better, then that's fine. Item adjustments, uh, these are kind of big as well. They're making Leeching Leer, which is the little component you use into Riftmaker, have 5% Omnivamp instead of 10% uh, Omnivamp, and making it from 150 health to 250. So you might see it as a big nerf, but the reason why they're doing this is they want Riftmaker to go away from assassins like Akali, who really stride on its huge Omnivamp. And making it more suited for AP bruises like Mordekaiser. So, it's an interesting change. Uh, I guess someone really hates Riftmaker Akali because I barely see enough Riftmaker in my opinion. And I feel like it should get more use since it is a very, very strong item. Uh, Eclipse's shield went from 150, 75 round range, to 180 and 90 in range, but the Omnivamp went down by 2% as well. So, like I said, they're toning down the healing, which is good because a lot of people have a lot of issues with the amount of healing that is in the game currently. So this is good stuff to see all around the board if you're on that train. So let's move over to the champion changes. So these are pretty big as well. Uh, like I said, very meaty patch use so is crazy. So we're going through these kind of fast unless they matter. So Olaf's base health is going off from 597 to 575, just a small uh, base health uh, nerf. And his passive attack speed buff went from 0 to 100 to 0 uh, to zero to 70 based on his missing health now. So this one's pretty big here. Because now that effectively slows down his clear pretty hard and his dueling power as he is missing 30% attack speed, which he is pretty big for him, especially with his W also giving him attack speed steroid as well. He's missing on a lot of beloved attack speed, so I think they just really wanted to reduce his dueling power and his clear speed. But that doesn't mean Olaf's a bad pick. He'll probably still stay a really, really good pick. 
Cho'Goff, E damage went from 22 to 82 to 22 to 70. Uh, it's honestly, kind of a small placebo nerf probably won't matter. I can't even believe in nerfing Cho'Goff. He just got good, and I just think he needs some time to settle. So, glad I didn't nerf him too hard, I guess. Pantheon Q deals 70% damage to minions. Will now deal 70% damage to minions and monsters. So, taking a stab at Pantheon Jungle here. And this Q cooldown went from 10 to 8 seconds to 13 to 8. Uh, kind of a small nerf. I mean, it's a big nerf if you play Pantheon Jungle, but I've been seeing a lot more Pantheon mid and support anyways. He is a good jungler, and I've seen him jungle too, but... I still think a majority of his popularity is in mid and support, so this doesn't really nerf them that much. I mean, it adds three seconds to Q, but they're maxing their Q anyway, so their nerf doesn't really mean anything after three points into Q. Anivia's Q damage went from 7120, 50% AP, to 6200, 45% AP. So just taking a stab at a Q damage every slow slightly. Uh, they didn't say what part of the Q damage here, though, so I don't know if this is the blow up or the. The, the hit through or maybe both parts if it's both parts then it's kind of a sizable nerf if it's only one part then you only like you're literally only losing about 10 damage and 5% AP so it's very very negligible you're never really losing more than 30 damage here unless it's on both parts and her article I went from 4 to 1 seconds to 4 to 2 seconds also kind of small like it's not really a game changer especially since that's a max rank ult you might not even get to max rank ult in some games uh, Elise's human Q damage went from 4180 to 4160. W spider attack speed went from 6140 to 6100 um, percent. Interesting here, because Elise did get really good like, with the likes of Talia, which she also got nerfed this patch, and Elise just isn't played that much even now that she's is good. So I'm surprised they want to take her down hard, and I'm even more surprised with the attack speed uh, change here, because losing that much attack speed is pretty nice, uh, pretty hard. But it is at max rank. So, you won't really be seeing this change until like the mid to late game. But I wonder if that's enough for people to stop doing the Nash's Tooth tech on Elise, which is kind of sad to see because that was a kind of cool, fun tech. They reduced the health per level for Ivern, so he's a bit squishier, uh, I imagine, all the time. I wonder what this means. I don't think this will affect this clear on his passive, so if anything, I'll just make him squishier. And his E shield went from 80 to 20 to 80 to 100. So, they keep giving these small jabs to Ivern, so. Hopefully eventually it means something, but I think he's gonna stay on top, especially with how well he just works with the current moon stuff uh, moon staff meta. Seraphine's passive note damage went from 50 to 20 to 4 to 16. I think that's per note, and each champion can hold four notes, so that is kind of massive. It's pretty big. Even if it's just dual lane bot, like if that's per note, that's actually pretty big. Uh, w base shield went from 60 to 120 to 50 to 100, and w, uh, the W Seraphine shield itself went from 90 to 180 to 75 150. So making a squishy overall. But once again, these are two champions who thrive off Moon Staff. So uh, it's just like a small, it's a small nerf that just doesn't seem like it's gonna matter. These champions are probably gonna stay on top no matter what. They also nerfed the Udia R aura damage from 50 to 300 to 50 to 275 over four seconds. Uh, kind of funny because they're the ones that gave him this in the first place, but not taking it back a bit. Well, not really all the way, just a slide bit. And it's only the aura, it's not really the hit, so it's also pretty negligible as well. Uh, the Talia passive movement speed went from 1240 to 20 to 45%. Uh, interesting change here. Interesting because I think percentage is more than flat. And her Q stone damage and monsters after the first went from 100 to 80%. Definitely taking on her clear as well, like we see with the Pantheon, the Olaf as well. Very, really, really interesting changes. And then we come down to the champion buffs here. Uh, champion buffs are really interesting in this patch. So we have Karma's mana regen going up from 11.5 to 13, and AQ mana cost going down from 65 to 55. This is probably to just keep up the pressure in lane, where as other supports can, like Janet, Karma can't if she keeps spamming. Silas's Q mana cost goes from 50 to 75 to 55 at all ranks. His W damage is 65205, 85% AP, to 72010, and 90% AP. So pretty sizable. Um, I know my man Rhyme here is uh, pretty happy about this one because he loves his Silas. So I think he'll take any small change he could get. Even if it's not massive, it is pretty sizable to have your Q mana cost 55 at all ranks. Singe's Q AP ratio went from 80 to 90%. Uh, that's nice probably for the Singe rings out there. I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, it's just a 10%, so, I mean, if you have a really, really long sustained fight, it probably will mean a lot. But I don't think this is going to, like, bump him up in priority. 
Riven's ECD, which is a shield dash ability, went from 12 to 8 seconds to 10 to 6. Uh, that scares me because I hate going against Riven's, but that's my own personal problem. But uh, this is a pretty good buff because this 2 seconds are all ranks no matter what. And it's not like Riven's are maxing shield or anything, but the fact that it's down to 10 already on top of any haste she will build makes this ability b pretty much become 8 seconds in the mid to late game, maybe even lower too. So. That's pretty pretty big, I feel like, for Rivens out there. Uh, this one's an interesting run. This one's a big change for sure. Uh, Jinx's Q range extension on her rockets, Fishbones, is going from 75 175 to 100 to 200. So this is only 25 auto attack range, but 25 auto attack range is massive. It's big. To give you a perspective, Rapid Fire Cannon only gives 50 auto attack range. So you have to imagine that with this with Rapid Fire is pretty big, and this without Rapid Fire is still big because just keeps you uh, at bay and a lot safer when you're using Fishbone. So, this in combo with Shield Bow, Lord Dominic's, and PD buffs this patch. I, I bet Jinx will move up in priority for sure. Ezreal uh, QAD ratio is up from 120 to 130%. That's just really nice, and it's probably really going to feel really good for the Ezreal mains out there. 10% isn't much, but when you spam Q every single second, it's going to mean a lot. Uh, Mordekaiser's ECD went from 24 to 12 seconds to 22 to 10 seconds. Just a small nice buff, probably for those board mains out there with the Rift Maker changes. Vladimir's RCD went from 150 to 120 to 120 at all ranks. Uh, that's probably nice as well, probably for the Vladimir's out there, which I despise them. I just personally hate them. But uh, him having a little cooldown as well just means he's going to be able to carry a lot more games a lot faster. Uh, this buff I do not like whatsoever, but is a very strong one. Uh, Shivana's Q AP ratio, which she has none right now, is now she's going to have a 40% AP ratio on it. And hey, She's going to get 8% move speed per 100 AP for her W as well. Um, very strong buffs here, but I'm kind of upset that Riot wants to push Shivana into an AP way when I know a lot of people didn't, don't really like playing against AP Shivana and it's not really a thematic and doesn't fit her. So it's really interesting to see them now take this approach, especially because I'm pretty sure she's not going to get a reward because I don't think she's going to win the rework VGU vote because she was I think last place on the last one so I imagine she's not going to be very high on this one either. Jeremy Jessman's Rel, uh, her ECD unbinding on self 3 seconds to 1 second so now she'll just be able to bind faster in between. Uh, kind of a weird change because that just means like the E's always going to be up when it's uh, if even if you unbind it. At least before with 3 seconds if she accidentally unbinded it then like or if someone died that was bounded and she still had it she had to wait 3 seconds. So there was like some counterplay this just eliminates any counterplay so it's a little interesting to see this. But uh, I don't think this will have much change either. Overall this patch is really meaty and a lot of stuff in here. But I think a lot of stuff is kind of small stuff that people just won't see at all. But uh, happy to see them. I'm honestly more happy about the item changes. More than anything else, especially the ADC one, since I know ADC is still a pretty stale and dead roll, especially with the Moon Staff and Swains and whatnot going on down there. It's a uh, it's pretty pretty bad time. So anything to help them become better is nice. So with that, guys, that finishes up our patch 11.3 preview review. And uh, you know, if you guys like the content I make here, please subscribe, consider commenting down below, leaving me feedback. I always love hearing from you guys and making content for you guys. And if you came all the way to the end, congrats to you. Thank you for coming by and stopping by. Uh, comment Oreos down below. I always love to see who makes it. And please do keep in mind I stream every single day, or not every single day, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch. And you can check the links out on the top of my channel banner on my channel. Thank you for coming. I know it was a really sloppy outro, but I'm just gonna roll with it. Thank you guys.